Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now look at artificial vegetative propagation. That is, what are the different methods by which we can make more plants grow. So we will talk about cutting, layering and grafting. So let us start our discussion with cutting. The word cutting, we are all familiar with it, right? That means to cut a part of the plant. So a plant part is cut from the parent and put into the soil, which later gives rise to a new plant. It is very simple, right? I think many of us actually do this in our day-to-day -day life. As I said, let us suppose if you have one rose plant in your house and you want 10 rose plants to be there so that you have more number of roses. So what do you do? You cut a branch of the rose plant and put it in another pot. So you see another plant growing. Again, you take another branch and put it in a third pot. So you, you see another plant growing. So stem cutting is common for plants like rose and sugar cane. So for rose plants, you can just cut a branch or a stem and put it in soil. So you will get a new plant. Similarly, root cutting is common for plants like dahlia. As I said, in case of dahlia, they have got roots which can actually give rise to new plants, right? They have got thick fleshy roots. So in case of dahlia, we cut a root and put it in a pot. So in that case, these roots of dahlia can give rise to a new plant. So stem cutting and root cutting are common ways of artificial vegetative Propagation. So here you can see that the reproduction is not happening on its own. The plants are not making new plants on their own. Human beings are forcing them to do so. We are cutting a branch, cutting a branch or we are cutting the root of the plant and then putting them in soil and that is why new plants are coming up. So these are artificial vegetative propagation. The next one is layering. So what is layering? Let us see that. So here new plants are formed from steps of parent plant without detaching them initially from the parent. So that means with the help of the stems of parent plant, we will grow new plants. But we will make sure that we do not separate the stem of the plant at the first go. So that is the difference between layering and stem cutting. Because in the case of rose plant also, we were uh, growing new plants from stem of the parent plant. But in that case, we were cutting the stem from the parent. That means we were detaching the part from the parent. But in this case, we will not detach the stem from the parent. So let we will see how we do it. Now there are two types of layering. One is called mound layering and the other one is called air layering. So we will look at both the methods in detail. So a variety of plants can be grown by this method. For example, strawberry, guava, lemon, china rose. In fact, there are a lot many varieties of plants which can be grown by this method of layering. Actually, these artificial vegetative propagation methods are extremely useful in our day-to-day -day life because when we want to increase the number of plants, when we want to increase the production of fruits and vegetables, we actually start growing more and more plants by this method. So let us talk about mound layering. So what do we actually do here is we pull a branch of the plant. That means the parent plant. So here this is the parent plant. So we pull a branch of the parent plant towards the ground. So we pull it till here and then cover a part of it with moist soil. So this is the moist soil. So with this moist soil we will cover this much portion of the uh, branch and then what will happen then the remaining portion of the branch will be taken out and it is tightly binded to some support maybe some pole or some rod which is present there with that we will tie it now what will happen we have covered only this much portion of the branch with mud soil or with moist soil so now the, this much portion, this portion is getting all the nutrients from the soil. It is also getting water from the soil. Now what happens after some time, after a few days, we see that new roots develop from this covered part. This part which was covered with um, moist soil, roots start coming out from this part. Now when you have roots on this part, 
that means this part is capable of growing into a new plant. So then it is cut from or it is detached from the parent plant. So now you have this as the parent plant and this as the new plant. So they are both independent and separate plants. So in this case you saw that the stem we we produced the new plant with the help of the stem of the parent plant, right? This was the stem of the parent plant. But we did not detach the stem from the parent plant at the very initial stage. So once the new plant was formed, once the new roots have grown, only after that we detached it from the parent plant. So this is known as mound layering. So there is another way of doing this layering. That is why it is called layer because a layer of moist soil is put over a part of the plant. And because of that, a new plant is formed. There is another method of doing layering that is called air layering. The word air means it has nothing to do with the soil. Things will happen in air. Let us see how it happens. Let us suppose if this is a plant. Now instead of pulling the branch towards the ground, what do we do? We do the layering on an aerial branch. We will not drag this branch to the soil. Instead of that, what we will take some moist mud or some moist soil and we will put it over this, this much portion of the branch and then we will cover it with some plastic, right? So you take uh, some, some moist mud, you put that moist mud over some portion of the branch and then you tie it, tie it with a plastic. Why do you tie it with a plastic? So that that moist mud remains in touch with that much portion of the branch. So this aerial branch is scraped and covered with moist mud. You cover it once again with the plastic. After some time, what do you see? You see that new roots start developing in that portion of the plant. So that means now this portion is also capable of being an independent plant. So then this branch is cut and planted as a separate plant. So now you have this as the parent plant and here you have a new plant. So this is known as air layering. This is called air layering because an aerial branch is layered. But in previous one it is called mound layering because the branch was pulled to the ground and then there it was layered. So these are the two methods by which layering is done. A wide variety of plants can be grown by this method. Because you see, you look at the importance, we are able to grow as many plants as we want and they are not very complicated methods. They are quite simple methods, right? So this is known as layering. And now the last one that is grafting. So grafting is another interesting method of vegetative propagation which not only gives new plants but it also improves the quality of many plants. So what is done here? Here stems are cut from two different plants and then they are attached to grow as a single plant. So that's interesting. Now since here we are cutting stems from two different plants, so we have the freedom to choose the plant from which we want the stems. So we, want, we take desired quality stems from two different plants and then we attach those two stems and then we let them grow as a single plant. So in that case, we get the desirable traits from both the plants. So let us see how it happens. It happens somewhat like this. So you take this portion from one plant and you take the lower portion from some other plant. So this lower portion is known as stalk and the upper portion is known as skyen. So the skyen and the stalk. So the upper portion is known as skyen and the lower portion is known as stalk. So you take these two portions from two different plants and then what do you do? You make sure that both of them have the same diameter so that they can exactly fit over one another and we also prefer it is also preferred that when you cut this um, portion you cut it in a slant way like how it is shown in this picture here you have seen that they are cut in a slant way so this is from one plant the stalk is from some other plant and then the both are joined together in this way and then they are 
tied to each other in such a way that there is no gap left between the scion and the stock. So when you tie it very nicely with each other, so what happens? This stock that is the lower portion provides water and minerals to the plant because it, it is in uh, connection to the soil. So it will take up minerals and water from the soil and the, it will provide the same to the sky. Now the sky is from some other plant. Right? So the sky has some desired characteristics from that other plant. So what is the advantage? Can you guess what is the advantage of this kind of vegetative propagation? Now here, the quality of certain plants can be improved. Now one example is you have these two different fruits one is lemon and one is orange you can grow lemon and orange from one plant how can you get lemon and orange from one plant you can use two different scions on the same stalk that means the lower portion of the plant that per, what is the purpose of the stalk here stalk only supplies water and minerals to the ab above part of the plant let right. us so suppose you have one stalk and in that one stalk you can have two scions. For example, somewhere like this, let us suppose if this is one stalk and on that one stalk you can have two scions. This stalk will only provide water and minerals. Now you take this scion from a lemon plant, you take this scion from an orange plant and then you graft them. You tie it here, you tie it here. So when you graft them, so now you have just one plant and in this one plant, you will get lemons from this side and you will get oranges from this side. So the same plant will be, can be used to get two or more different, two or more types of products, right? So that is a very important advantage of this method of grafting. So with this, I think we, I have covered all um, the asexual modes of reproduction so wherein we have spoken about the different asexual modes in lower unicellular animals as well as simple multicellular animals as well as plants in plants we have also spoken about the vegetative propagation the natural ways of vegetative propagation as well as the artificial methods so with this i will end my discussion on asexual you. Please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.